Realty Income Stock, ticker symbol O, the famous monthly paying dividend stock. Realty income beat on earnings most recently, and analysis are still very optimistic for this company. From a dividend point of view, things look pretty interesting with dividend yield at 4.89%, and 26 years of consecutive dividend increases. But the real reason why people love this stock is because of the monthly dividends. The stock itself is trading sideways year to date and is down 2%, which is quite a difference with the S&P 500, which is up 7.3% year to date. But does this mean that Realty Income stock is a buy at current prices? Well, in this video I'm going to show you real quickly what Realty Income does. The most recent earnings report, the fundamental analysis, dividends, returns versus the S&P 500 and in the last part I'm giving you my price target to see if they are a buy or not. And I think you definitely want to see that part so make sure to watch until the end. And I'm also very excited to see what you guys think about this stock. So please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does Realty Income do? Realty Income Corporation is a real estate investment trust that invests in freestanding single tenant commercial properties in the United States, Spain and the United Kingdom that are subject to triple N leases. If we check some company highlights in the most recent earnings report, we see that net income to stockholders was 227 million or 0.36 per share. Nothing special to mention here. FFO increased 18% year over year, which is pretty nice, and AFFO increased 6% year over year, which is pretty decent. They completed the acquisition of Anchor Boston Harbor Resort and Casino from Wynn Resorts for 1.7 billion. They also invested 3.9 billion in 578 properties, which is very nice, of which 387 million was invested in Europe including the first investment in Italy for 7 properties totaling 166 million. To me this is very important, I really like to see the expansion to Europe. Another great thing is that they announced the acquisition of up to 185 single tenant retail and industrial properties from CIM Real Estate Financial Trust for approximately 894 million, which is expected to close during the first half of 2023. A thing that I really like as well is the net to debt EBITDA. It's sitting at 5.3 which is in the range of my preferred number of 5 to 6.5. So this comforts me a lot. I started to paying more attention to this number as of lately. And in here we see a summarize of the financial results. Revenue was reported at 888 versus 685 same quarter last year. An increase of almost 30%. The FFO and AFFO also look pretty good as I showed earlier. And this also covered the dividends very well. Dividends paid last quarter were 0.78, giving us a parent ratio around 75%, which is the average for a REIT, so this looks very good to me. They also announced the 101st consecutive quarterly dividend increase, which is very impressive. And again, the parent ratio is looking really good at 75% as they stated themselves as well. Realty Income is a S&P 500 company and one of the 64 companies in the S&P 500 Aristocrats Index since they increased the dividends for 25 years or more. They are a top 5 global REIT with a 14.6 compound annual shareholder return since 1994, which is very impressive since the S&P 500 is sitting at roughly 10%. The dividends are growing at 4.4% annually since 1994. Realty Income is aiming to continue as a top 5 global REIT and continue to average double digit shareholder return, which is very nice. Realty Income is a 60 billion enterprise value company with 54 years of operating history, so they know their game. They have over 12,000 properties within their portfolio, and credit ratings are sitting at A3, A-, which is very nice. The portfolio breakdown also looks really interesting, with 1240 clients in 84 industries, to me very diversified. Around 76% of the tenant breakdown focus on non-discretionary, low price point or service retail. Non-retail represents 16% and the last 8% is coming from other. 
Realty income is also focusing on Europe, especially Spain and Italy. The UK also has some properties. To me this is very interesting since I really like the global expansion to diversify a bit more. Another important number is the occupancy rate. Historical median is sitting at 98% which is very nice. The peer average is sitting at 94%. The thing that I really like about realty income is the fact that they are able to grow very steady with the AFFO over a longer period of time. Since 2012 they have a AFFO per share compound annual growth rate around 5%. And this is of course not the highest number, but it's really steady and consistent. And in here we see the diversified high quality portfolio once more. The top 20 clients contains a lot of big names in here. And the biggest tenant is sitting at 4%, which is fine by me. It looks very diversified. The industry diversification also looks really good. Grocery stores is sitting at 10% being the biggest industry. Convenience store is sitting at 8.6% and dollar stores is the third largest industry with 7.4%. To me, this looks very diversified again. And if you think about retailers, you automatically think about the booming e-commerce replacing a lot of these stores. But Realty Income focus on retailers with minimal exposure to the booming e-commerce. And now that we know more about the company, it's time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you a lot for watching this video. Make sure to join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free, so don't miss it out. Let's continue with diving into the fundamentals. Realty Income is a 40 billion market cap company. PE ratio isn't a fair metric to use with REITs, so we are focusing on the price to FFO, which is sitting at 15.5, indicating that it could be undervalued based on this number. Later in this video, I will show you my three price targets for Realty Income, so make sure to watch until the end. Because price to FFO is only telling a small part of the full story here. Revenue is at 3.34 billion, and in this graph we see that revenue went up in the long run. To me this looks pretty steady and consistent. Most recently revenue started to increase quite a lot due to some acquisitions and the world opening more and more after the lockdown periods. Margins are going up and down quite a bit over a longer period of time. They have decreased quite a bit so that's something to keep your eye on. Most recently margins started to increase again which is really nice. EPS is also going up in the long run and it has been a bumpy ride during the lockdown periods. Right now it's going up big time again. An analysis expect EPS to increase at mid single digits in the coming years. Revenue is expected to grow at high single to mid double digits in the coming years, which is also very nice. Return on assets is sitting at 3%, which is below my 10% minimum, and it's the same story with the return on equity. These numbers aren't looking that great. The most important number here, return on invested capital, is sitting at 1.8%, which is also a really low number. And the fact that it's lower than the 5 year average also worries me a bit. Current ratio is at 1.85, which is a little bit too high in my opinion, since it's below the 1.5 mark that I prefer. So this looks also a bit interesting. Historically it looks pretty good to me, but keep an eye on the increase. Total debt is sitting at 18 billion, and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a third of the total debt with the total cash position. Right now total cash is sitting at 171 million, so this doesn't look that good. However, keep in mind that REITs issue a lot of new debt to grow the business. Nevertheless, it's still very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and open new locations. And in here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run. But it also grew at a steady and consistent pace for a read. Another thing that's interesting are the shares outstanding. It's going up quite a lot in the long run. Usually this is not a good sign, but REITs issue new shares to raise capital and grow the business. But when shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyway, dividend yield is sitting at 4.89%, which is a really good number. Annual payout is a little bit over $3 and payout ratio is at 75% as we saw earlier in this video, and not the 207% displayed here. This is because REITs use FFO to pay out the dividends. 
The 5 year growth rate is at 3.78, which is a decent number for a REIT. Especially since the dividend yield is already at 4.89%. On top of that, they grew the dividends for 26 years in a row, which is also very impressive. And the real reason why people love realty income is of course because of the monthly dividends. Overall, a great looking dividend scorecard, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare realty income stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added some competitors, SPG, Triple N and FRT. On the 5 year chart we see that realty income returned 53% including dividends, underperforming the S&P 500 big time, which returned 71%. Both SPG and FRT didn't do a great job either, and Triple N also underperformed the S&P 500 with only 38% return. On the one year chart it looks pretty interesting, with realty income returning minus 8%, which is of course a big drop. The S&P 500 returned minus 6%, and both SPG and FRT again had a really bad number. But on the 6 month chart things look pretty different. Realty income had nearly the same return as the S&P 500, but SPG had a 17% return. Triple M also beat the S&P 500 and realty income on the 6 month chart. On the 1 month chart we see that realty income had a minus 2% return, while the S&P 500 did best with 1% return. So bottom line, realty income underperformed the S&P 500, but beat most competitors in the long run. And how about some fundamentals compared to the other companies? We see that there is a big difference in terms of market cap, enterprise value and employees. All companies have a high PE ratio, but to me it's not that interesting since these are REITs. Price to free cash flow is significantly lower than other companies, so that's also very interesting. Revenue growth year over year is the highest at royalty income. And so is the 5 year compound annual growth rate. Net income compound annual growth rate is the highest at royalty income again, and so is the EPS growth. Last but not least is the free cash flow compound annual growth rate. It's sitting at almost 28% for realty income, which is an insane number, and also beating the other companies in this list. Realty income has the highest gross profit margin together with Triple M, but not the highest net income margin. In fact, realty income has the lowest net income margin. All companies have quite some debt and to me there's no big winner here. The last thing that I want to check are the dividends. Dividend yield is the highest at SPG, but the dividend growth number is way higher at royalty income. FRT has the most consecutive years of dividend increases, but royalty income and triple N also did a great job here. Overall I think realty income looks the better company compared to the other companies in this list. Revenue growth, free cash flow and net income are growing at high numbers and dividends are also very nice. But how about the future? Is realty income stock a buy at current prices? Well, let's check the three price targets that I created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 8%, 9% and 10% since I think they will increase their revenue at lower numbers versus the historical averages. Next to that it's also based on the analysis expectations and the current outlook. Profit margin I'm filling in 24, 26 and 28 percent. And for the free cash flow margin I'm filling in 70, 73 and 76 percent. Since this is a read I don't pay attention to the PE ratio, but I will have to fill it in, for 20 in this case. For the price to free cash flow I'm filling in 15, 16 and 17. My desired annual return is 15% since I want to build a higher margin of safety. Usually I fill in 12.5% so I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now realty income is at $62. I hit analyze and we see a few green numbers. We have a low price target of $56 and again I'm only focusing on the discounted cash flow value and not the PE ratio. We have a mid price target of $65 and we have a high price target of $75. To me the mid to high price target is the most justified here, so that means a range of $65 to $75, indicating that realty income is undervalued right now. My final conclusion on this stock is that I really love this company. 
they are really steady and consistent over a longer period of time. Expanding to Europe seems like an excellent choice to me. And in the meantime, they are acquiring more companies and assets in the US, which is also very nice. It has to be said that REITs took a big hit most recently, pushing the stock price to an interesting number in general. But it also becomes a higher risk reward investing. That's also why I decided to put in an extra margin of safety with the 15% return. Right now, Realty Income is one of the biggest REIT investments in my portfolio. And I'm planning to buy more shares very soon. The valuation looks really interesting and the monthly dividends are just very nice. But remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about a stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.